All right. Well, we're, are we? We're, we're live. Congratulations. Are you we, certain? <laughs> I am almost certain. So, yes. Okay. Uh, right. You know what? We're going to make this work great. Uh, Every, so, everybody's gone. Yeah. So, and I, I walked in. Yeah. I'll be honest. I said, this is not like the rapture. This is like the great falling away. <laughs> Uh, before the second coming, all the all of these have just fallen away. Yeah. So we, uh, you know, we've got lights on. That was a that was a win to me. Yeah. Like, these fancy things, you know. And if that thing is working, yeah. that's that's huge. That's and I see work. people are responding already. That's so a good sign. We we just need maybe to we're alive. Maybe that's we're great. alive. You know what? I'm alive. Let's 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 at that. least use language as if we're that's right. <laughs> we are. Let's, we are here. Let's talk as if we're alive. Well, well, great. So I thought uh, yesterday was a great Sunday. Uh, some great lay leadership stepped up. That was yeah. one of my favorite things to see. You know, my wife said, "Mac, Josh was there," and I said, "Well, yeah, he, I, I guess so." I didn't. Yeah, so I didn't I, mean to slight oh, you. Hey, I wasn't I, slighted because I I just stand where they stay and and, and you, they just and you read and Jim do a I great read, job you know? at that. You know, we, it's fun. We'd like to bring a little little fun to the morning. A little levity. Um, I'm always <laughs> interested to see the people around me. Uh, a lot of faces. It's yeah. it's a lot of practice in not responding to people who are making uh, faces at you while you talk. So. <laughs> Uh, those scripts are not like really well developed scripts anyway, so it's pretty easy to throw us off if we're really honest. But, oh gosh! Uh, but no, it's, it was good. It was it was just neat to see. Um, you know, it just shows that equipping that we've been talking about, yeah, just yeah. equipping people for the service uh, of of God, not only outside the they, church. But they inside did the church. do a great yeah. job. I was just sitting there. I didn't realize it until I was just sitting there. I thought, oh, gosh, everybody up there on that stage, they're all lay people. Yeah. Uh, we don't have anybody up here leading, but late people. And then I got to, I, I turned around, I looked back at the sound booth, and then I couldn't see up in the, yeah, the in the director's cabin. Holidays. Yeah, the, uh, what do they call those big, uh, the owner suite? Yes, the owner. Up there in the owner suite, I couldn't <laughs> yeah. see up there. Yeah. But I, it looked to me like everybody was volunteers. Oh, I think they were, yeah. And, uh, you know, as a kid, that was always that was always the place you wanted to go. Yeah. Is the sound booth, yeah. especially the that video suite. booth, man. Yeah. <laughs> you would try to sneak up. They always, have food in there. <laughs> oh, I assume. Yeah, I assume there's like TV. They're watching of, the ball game. Platters of shrimp. Yeah. Oh man, one day, one day I will. I will have made during it. the sermon. They're up there watching yeah. something else. That's right. Oh, uh, uh, well, yeah. At least football doesn't start till after the sermon. Yeah, so that's, that's right. Um, yeah. Well, so. I love the series we're in, uh, talking about the last Good. days. This is always something people are engaged with. Uh, right. You know, in student ministry, if you want kids to come, you usually talk about dating. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at church, one of the things you can talk about is uh, the last days or, yeah. or just trying to understand the current days uh, in light of the scripture. So, what lies ahead? The days ahead. The days ahead. And uh, I thought, you know, just the, the takeaway yesterday of of just remembering that whatever happens, there's this grand promise that stands in front yeah. of us that, that Jesus is coming back. Yeah. You know, um, of course, you're a Samford graduate, Beeson graduate. And, um, you know, young guys, which you're in that category, Ooh. today have really kind of moved off away from the second come in right. and the rapture of the church. And, and I think a lot of it has to do with maybe not so much my generation as the generation that was right ahead of me, mm -hmm. who came out with so much speculation, even though I tend to kind of lean that way, so much speculation that it turned a lot of people off. However, all this craziness we're going through today tends to make everybody believe, well, you know what, maybe those guys were right. <laughs> you know, uh, but I tried, I tried desperately, Josh, to get to what is the core uh, of Paul's message in this section yeah. about what I think is the rapture of the church. Uh, I do believe in the rapture. I believe in the seven years of tribulation. I believe in the second coming after that and the millennial reign. And then uh, in that in that way, uh, that's just what I believe. It's the way I understand scripture. Yeah. But I think it's got to be more than just, you know, Paul telling them the Russians are coming or the Chinese are coming, would have meant nothing to these people in that day. Right, right. So he had to have had a message, and that's why I laid out so much background about Thessalonica and what was the history 
and how Paul was there such a short period of time, and yet he taught the whole counsel of God, and he talked about um, the second coming, and they misunderstood. Anybody that preaches on the second coming, you just know people are going to misunderstand what yeah, you've said. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's, one of the things I think that's really interesting about the second coming is I don't know that, that everybody's that excited about it. Uh, this is one of those cultural things I think, and it's it's definitely cultural here, because you know if you're if you're doing all right and you still got some stuff yeah. to look forward to, yeah. you know, waiting on retirement, uh, I wonder sometimes if it doesn't reveal some of our hearts and even our our understanding of of, of eternity of heaven mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we we sit back and think, well, I'd love for Jesus to come back, but maybe. Maybe after my trip. Yeah, when I'm 90 years yeah, old. If you're a teenager, yeah. you know, after yeah. I get that first girlfriend, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe just sometime later. Uh, but then you contrast that yeah. with, you know, the, the cultures and the people who have longed for it are usually the people who, who are struggling and don't have a yeah. choice yeah. and can't find hope in this world. Well, that, you know what, that's a lot of truth in that. These people were facing persecution, and it was just going to explode. It was going yeah. to get so much worse than what they were experiencing when Paul wrote this. Mm -hmm. And you're right, you know, in the Western world, we're comfortable. We got a little savings account, driving a nice car, got a nice comfortable home. Um, you know, we go down, we got a timeshare, we're down at the beach or we're off here, there, yonder. Yeah. And we would, really would like, listen, if Jesus in heaven isn't better than your timeshare, you have got a serious <laughs> problem with how you're reading scripture. That's right. That's about right. heaven. Yeah. I, I am, I am counting on the fact that heaven is better than somebody's timeshare. Absolutely. I hope so. <laughs> uh, you know, it must be a really nice timeshare. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's, I just think it's fascinating that, that I, I don't know where, where the breakdown happens or, or what it is. I know, uh, when you, even when you think about the songs about heaven, usually they were written by people who were struggling, uh, mm -hmm. who are, who were experiencing persecution, who are experiencing, yeah. you know, uh, a lot of things we're, we're experiencing. Uh, one of the things I thought that was really interesting yesterday was talking about how doctrinal error Mm -hmm. leads to anxiety yeah, you know, oh, good and, and how yes. it's just a, kind of a spiral really yes. it, it, once you begin chipping away at the foundations the whole the whole building begins to fall down yeah. um, is there any could you expand a little bit on what yeah what well uh, let me let me ask you first since you've worked with teenagers for the last 60 years um, or it feels <laughs> like it right hey, one year feels like 60 years. <laughs> You, how, don't you find that to be true? Absolutely. That when somebody skews and misinterprets and really takes out of context a piece of doctrine, it just throws everything into a downward spiral. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, and, and that's what was happening with these Thessalonians. They yeah. had misunderstood the doctrine of eschatology, the second coming, and they thought, now here was the thought, bizarre as it sounds, Oh, if I don't live until Christ comes back, then uh, I'm lost. You know, even if I've accepted Christ, I'm lost. That's how bizarre they had gotten. That's yeah. that's how far out of understanding the doctrine of, of the second coming they had gone. Well, you can imagine how, I mean, how every day you'd be fearful. Yeah, yeah. You'd, yeah. You'd, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm, am I going to live today? Yeah. If I don't, you know. And really what that comes back to, it's almost a work salvation. i got to keep myself alive until Jesus comes yeah, back. It, and, and just be one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Uh, and imagine how bad every funeral was. Oh, good just, night, I mean, man. you're not only saying goodbye, you're permanently saying goodbye. Well, that's why Paul says you don't, you don't grieve like people who have no hope. Now, yeah. I've done funerals. You've done funerals. In fact, the first funeral that I attended here, you, you preached. You did a great job. Uh, but... I've been in funerals where people are burying a loved one and they all know Christ as Lord yeah. and Savior. And then I have done funerals of people who nobody knew Christ. Mm -hmm. And there is, you can't even begin to write the difference between yeah. the two. I'll tell you, I, when, I, when I've done funerals where the, you know, that it is a saintly yeah. woman who has been in the church, and has, it, it's, the spirit is really almost one of, of just... Of letting go, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and it's it's a celebration, it's it's joy, um, 
and and yeah, there's sadness. Obviously, there's yeah. grief, but but everybody just is at peace yeah. at the end. Yeah. And uh, you know, when it when you don't have that hope, when yeah. you don't have that assurance, it, it's 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 hard. It's hard yeah. to lead those funerals sometimes yeah. because you you want the message to get across and say, look, you you don't want to find yourself right. in this place. Right. But you know, Paul didn't say here we don't grieve. Right. That's not what he said. Yeah. We do grieve. You know, when you lose loved ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said, we don't grieve as if we have no hope. Right. We do have hope. In the midst of, of a Christian's grief, there is hope. That's good. Yeah, I think that's very important. And I think that's, if you miss that in the understanding of that, you don't really understand what Paul is saying yeah. in the rest of this yeah. whole thing. Well, I think, you know, you can get caught in the weeds, yeah. wondering about yeah. the times and the signs and all of this. Yeah. And, and well, instead, just hear the that context. Hope. Context, context, context. That's what I'm <laughs> right. preaching to these preachers that I'm teaching right yeah. now. Context, if you know, any text without context is a pretext for anything you want to make up. Yeah, I can't tell you how many sermons uh, the Holy Spirit ultimately, but my convictions led me to not preach because the yeah. verse would have worked really well for what I wanted to yeah. say. Yeah. But then I read the other two on each side and yeah. realized that's, that's not it. Well, all that's right. integrity right yeah. there. Because there are a ton of preachers out there who will not let that mess up a sermon. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and then talk about chipping away at foundations. What happens then is yeah. people begin to to mm -hmm. read. You know, a lot of verses have always, you know, they can go all over the place. One of, one of the exercises I think would be really interesting uh, one day is to just see how many different faiths and religions you could create by just taking verses out of context. And that's uh, exactly what all of them have done. Yeah. L. Ron Hubbard is a great one. I've got a great illustration. He takes two different texts, one out of this place, one out of here. They're called collapsing contexts, okay. where one has nothing to do with the other, but he's brought them together, and it's really to magnify himself, mm -hmm. not Jesus Christ. That's interesting. Yeah, and, and that's, that is so important. I would say um, one, of the other, one of the great things is, is just this idea of focusing on those moments of majesty. I love that idea. I love the idea that we need to um, th those those little those moments in life are just kind of previews yeah. of what we're going to experience when we're with Jesus. That's exactly right. Uh, That's right. And, and I, you know, the in Irish in Irish spirituality, uh, kind of like the Catholic slash Irish Celtic mm -hmm. spirituality, mm -hmm. they have this concept called thin places. It's, it's they're plate. They're actually physical yeah, places that's where they. I hadn't heard that in a long time. And they they stand and you know just it's a place where you just feel closer to God. Yeah, and and yeah. I think in our lives, uh, for students, we love creating that because we can yeah. create that somewhat through camp experiences. You know, <laughs> Covenant yeah. College. No or, sleep for three days. Right. Deprive them of decent yeah. food. That does yeah. help. Yeah. Yeah. They get really emotional. Yeah. Then you can. Then you've you can, had an experience. Yeah. <laughs> then you can tell them exactly what they want to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Right. That. Yeah. That is dangerous. I, <laughs> I do appreciate that camps have stopped uh, doing the Thursday night altar yeah. call because yeah. it is pretty, it's like shooting fish yeah. in a barrel at yeah. that point. Yeah. But, uh, but I do think those moments, you know, I can think of times, uh, I'm sure you've been to Ridgecrest, North Carolina, yeah. Yeah. you know, just as a kid growing up there, when I'm there, I, you know, I just, I can remember the lessons and it was just a period. Yeah. And that's why, you know, retreats, things like that, even just getting away. And I think we find that even and our desire to come back to the building here, mm -hmm. you know, and get mm -hmm. people worshiping. In some ways, this is a place that, you know, some great spiritual memories have been made, right. and and we just, we cherish the opportunity to come and, and Well, you know, it. even the Old Testament talks about Abraham getting back to Bethel. Yeah. Going back, I'm going back to Bethel. I'm going back to the last place where I built that altar. There is some validity in that. Mm -hmm. There is, there is some, uh, it's it, you have to guard against it becoming a talisman or yeah. a rabbit's foot or a, you know. Yeah, you, you, you can't. But, it's not but superstitious. That's sure. right. Yeah. That's right. But there is something to be said about a place that's been set aside and dedicated to the worship of God. Right. And um, it is special, although we cannot attack. Do not get to the point where you attach. You know. Everything about well, this is the only place got no. It's not. That's right. Know. That's right. And that, we have to be very careful yeah. not to, yeah. not to put our. You know, it becomes kind of an idol almost. Yeah. Well, we're, it does. We're not yeah. Careful, but we, yeah. we have to just remember that there is a lot to. 
you know, God is God is using all kinds of places, all kinds of experiences. Yeah. But uh, that's good. Uh, well, great. Well, I think one last thing would be this: um, just this idea of encouragement. I know mm -hmm. we're going to kind of dig into that, but that was something yeah. that you mentioned uh, quite a bit. But this idea of encouraging mm -hmm. one another. I don't know if we've ever been in a time where we could use a little Ooh. more. Encouragement. You know, Paul uses that word seven times. That, and that was the thing I did not really get to walk people through. Yeah. You start back in chapter 3, verse 2, and he uses the word there. And you go through chapter 5, and he uses it seven times. And I, I, I liken it to the fact that underneath our feet, there are rivers that flow. There are channels. There are streams that flow. You don't see it. But underneath your feet, as you walk outside, there are streams that are flowing. That's a stream that flows through these three chapters. Yeah. And there's a reason. I mean, the Holy Spirit doesn't put that one word in there seven times for you to ignore it. Um, I think that's what Paul is saying. I, you know, I'm giving you this to encourage you. Mm -hmm. You need to be encouraged. Your loved one's not lost. Right. You're going to be rejoined with your loved ones. Uh, beyond that, the greater joy is you're going to be joined with Christ, yeah. with your loved ones. That's what better thing, yeah. you know, uh, than to think that there's coming a day when, when all of us in our family, we've trusted Christ, we're going to be together mm -hmm. with the Lord. Now, we've done that with all of our kids. Now, we're slowly going through all of the grandkids. Man, I, I tell you, I want my, I don't want the circle to be broken. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's one of the great, I think that's one of the real encouragements Paul is giving here. And that's something we need to take seriously is our responsibility to teach and train and reach our own families. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and, and in doing that, you know, we, you see it like we talked earlier. I mean, when, when you don't have that solid foundation, yeah. even in your own family, it's so easy to, to fall away or fall, it is. fall it aside. Is. So, uh, yeah, great. To become great. distressed. Yeah, well, to and, feel hopeless. And if there, you know, we talked about the times like these with, with the, a lot of the signs of the times or just the times. For me, it was the uh, fire tornado that was mm -hmm. out in the West. I was like, okay, well, that's it. You know, yeah. that's yeah, that might be the Babylon B had such a great thing on <laughs> on uh, the governor signing that. Well, it was nothing but it, 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 a, a sin and a shame and a disgrace on that uh, new law or legislation out there that you can't prosecute somebody for sex with an underage uh, child, teenager, child. You know, he's got all this fire going on around him. He says, well, I just can't understand why the state is burning up right now. Yeah. It, you know, I'm telling you, it, uh, we are in, we are in the times. Well, where I'm telling you. Are, yeah. are definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you if you were looking for signs, it's not hard to find. Yeah, my state's burning down. Could it be? You know, <laughs> Could it? well, and I I would say uh, along with that, this is the time we have so much information too, mm -hmm. and I do think that information has to become part of that pull towards despair. Yeah, you know, I I just I keep yeah. thinking about all of the all of the news we can have. You know, there was a time when you just kind of knew what was going around you. Now, yeah. you know, every disaster everywhere and. And I think it's just easy to start connecting yeah. dots and thinking, this is this is a tough place. It but, is despairing. But then you also land on that truth. Uh, this isn't our home. That's you know, right. We, That's right. We can't be that overly invested in here. You know, we want to yeah. we want to invest. I think our time and we want to help people. We want to serve. We want to get the message of the gospel out. But yeah. uh, if our hope is making sure this place is going to be perfect, mm -hmm. then we're going to be really frustrated. Yeah. If if this is your best life, I've said this many yeah. times. If this is your best life now. Yeah, we're in real trouble. Well, I'm in trouble because just <laughs> just picking up trash for a couple hours, uh, yeah. I can still feel it in my back. I uh, know. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we don't need that. So, well, great. Well, hey, thanks so much for good. Joining us. Thanks, Josh, this for is, doing uh, this. Great. I mean, hey, Kirkwood was right me, and he's driving back. Okay. His grandfather passed away. I think his grandfather would have been a hundred years old this week. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was just a few days away, and was saved last year. Yeah. What a great, incredible testimony. So Kirkwood is driving back, and he's texting me and. Good. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, don't text and drive. Don't text and drive. Yeah, don't text. And, please don't text and drive. And don't watch this and drive. Kirkwood. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, well, good. Well, this has been great. Thanks good. so much. Now I'm going right. to go uh, awkwardly push the button because okay. we don't have somebody pushing the button. So good. it's hey. just us. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We're, we're the only ones left. That's right. The true elect. This is the truth.